In the last video, we started the process of blocking out a landing page for the web using basic shapes and a few repeat grids. In this video, we're going to keep the ball rolling with some visuals, and you'll really start to see how fluid designing an XD is, and with access to Creative Cloud libraries, including and editing content created in Photoshop is incredibly seamless. Let's start off with the background layer. I was actually working on one earlier in Photoshop and now have saved in my Creative Cloud libraries, which I'm able to access under the file menu. And here's my library containing the different elements I'm going to be using for this project, including the background image, which I'm able to drag right on top of my landing page and as I hover over the various shapes, they'll highlight to tell me that I can use any of them as a mask. Once I drop it in the background layer, it'll be contained within that shape but I can easily adjust the crop by double clicking and then transforming the image to my liking. The same can be done for the logo, which I'll drag right on top of the placeholder at the top left and then make sure it fits within the bounds by pulling on one of the handles. At any time you need to zoom in, you can either hold down your command or control key and use your mouse's scroll wheel, use command or control plus and minus, or the zoom tool which you can find on the left. Great. Now looking at this in action, I'm not sure I'm digging the black and white adjustment I have on the background image. Thankfully, editing this back in Photoshop is super simple. In the Creative Cloud library, right clicking on the image will give me the option to edit, springing open Photoshop and revealing all of my layers, including the adjustment layer. All I have to do now is hide or delete this layer, save the document, and then pop back over to Adobe XD. And you'll notice that syncing has already started to take place. And in just a few seconds, my updated image will appear. Moving on to the navigation bar, I'm thinking a semi-transparent background will look quite nice. Clicking once will select the entire group, while double-clicking will select the individual elements within it. You can also hold down your command or control key to avoid selecting the group. With the navigation bar's background selected, I'm going to set the fill to appear black, and then decrease the opacity to around 40%. That's looking a little bit better. Next up, let's style the links over to the right. Helvetica is not a terrible typeface, but my developers mentioned they'll be using Open Sans for this project, which I was able to grab on Typekit. You may notice that as I change the type's properties, all the links within the repeat grid will update as well. Finally, I want to make sure to add some sort of visual indicator that the visitor is on the home page. For that, I'm going to grab my line tool from the left and draw out a short line underneath the home text making sure to hold down my shift key to constrain it. I'll then change the size to around 3 pixels and set the fill to a bright orange. I'm kind of liking this color and may want to use it again throughout the design. At the bottom left of the application, I can switch over to the Assets panel, where I'm able to save colors, character styles, and symbols. Pressing the plus button beside colors will save this orange for future use. Great, the top section of the landing page is complete. Let's head down to the repeat grid at the bottom. Very similar to the links above, I can adjust the text of the individual layers without affecting the others, and then the styling can be changed on just one event and it will push the changes to the rest. Again, I'm going to go with Open Sans and play around with different weights to draw the visitor's eye to certain information, especially the button. You know, I may want to bring in that orange we saved just a few moments ago. I'll go ahead and select both the month and the date, which I can do by selecting one on the artboard, and then with my shift key held down, select the second. Once they're both highlighted, double clicking on the color in my assets panel will apply it to all events. To finish off this section, I have some thumbnails over in Finder that would work great for these empty rectangles. With all of them selected, dragging to any one of the rectangles will populate them throughout the grid. And if at any point you decide to add more events, you can either bring in more images or the repeat grid will loop the existing ones. Alright, things are looking pretty good. Let's see how it looks in action. At the top right of the application, the play button will launch the desktop preview, where I can see the top section of my landing page, and if I scroll down, I can see what's below the fold. I'm pretty happy with it so far, but I may want to make a few tweaks. First off, let's fix some elements so they don't move during scrolling, starting with the nav bar. Back in my layers panel, I'll want to make sure that the whole nav bars group is active, and then over to the right, turning on fix position when scrolling will lock it in place. I'm also going to make sure that the nav bars group is at the top of my layer stack so it remains visible at all times. I think I may also want the background layer fix so that the events section rises up from below. Let's preview the page one more time. 
Now when I scroll down, you'll notice that the navbar and background layer remain in place while the events move up over top. Not too shabby. With the visuals now looking great, it's time to share. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how responsive resize can help create additional artboards and how you can gather feedback from your stakeholders.